Welcome to Hill War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Bloodhound. Saul, also known as Bloodhound, was born in 1971 in Switzerland. His mother is Jamaican and his father is Swiss. When he was three months old, his family moved to Los Angeles, California. They settled into the mid-city neighborhood above the 10 freeway. This area is home to the 2nd Avenue Gangsters, which is a clique of the Rolling 20 neighborhood bloods. Bloodhound got an early start in the gang in 1981. He was riding in a car with some older bloods when they spotted a group of crips at a schoolyard playground. The older bloods instructed Bloodhound to go put in work on him. Bloodhound got out the car and charged toward the crips. The fight lasted a few minutes. That was the first time Bloodhound got stabbed. He was only 10 years old. The young Bloodhound took a blade under his rib cage and was quickly on his way up the ranks. As a youth, Bloodhound was known for being fast, so his very first job as a blood was a runner. Whenever the Rolling 20 Bloods were driving with guns and drugs in the car and the police would stop him, a young Bloodhound would jump out the car with a product and guns and take off. He was so fast, the police would never catch him. As a young Blood, he wasn't invited to certain functions because he was still new. But after that, he started going to the dice games and began hanging out with the dope dealers. Bloodhound quickly learned the three basic rules of banging. First rule, never cry for help. Second rule, don't get arrested for dumb shit. Third rule, when your mouth writes a check, your ass better cash it. He eventually started working in the crack house. Bloodhound wasn't particularly fond of this job. He said, it stunk, man, cause they were cooking up dope. All the windows were closed. You don't want those suckers trying to sneak in. My first time I had to get out, my eyes were watering. I wasn't used to it. To avoid getting busted by the police, Bloodhound and Rolling Twins would toss pigeons and they would fly around the crack house. When the pigeons would tuck a wing and start spinning, that means cops were near. Bloodhound then graduated from a crack house lookout to selling dope. One day Bloodhound was curb serving, which means selling dope on a sidewalk. A car then pulls up to where Bloodhound was slanging dope. Not knowing they were Crips, Bloodhound walks up to the car and asks, Hey, what y'all need? One of the crips in the car emerges with a pistol and says, Yo life, and started shooting. Six bullets strike Bloodhound. As he stumbled, Bloodhound grabs his gun and starts firing back. The vehicle with the crips then drove off. That was the first time Bloodhound had been shot. On his 18th birthday, Bloodhound voluntarily registered with the US Selective Service. He served as a soldier in the US Army during the 1990 Persian Gulf War. He was honorably discharged from duty he then returned back to the streets of Los Angeles. During the early 90s, Bloodhound became the leader slash shot caller of the Black Demon Soldiers, which was a sub clique of the Rolling 20 neighborhood Bloods, also north of the 10 freeway. Bloodhound would charge and collect membership dues, which was a percentage of their income. Dues were as low as $20 for some members. In 1992, during the LA riots, Bloodhound was shot on the left side of his upper chest. Luckily, it healed well, and he didn't need to go to the hospital. During his active years, Bloodhound was shot 23 times on five different occasions, including the time he was shot nine times in the chest and abdomen. One day, Bloodhound's sister brought home a crib while Bloodhound was sleeping on the couch. Bloodhound had his hair pressed with red rollers and red rubber bands with a red bandana on his head to match. The crib walks in and sees him and socks him dead in the mouth. Bloodhound wakes up confused and he and the crib started fighting. The crib was much larger than Bloodhound so he was whooping him in his own house. Bloodhound then went to his kitchen and grabbed two knives and started poking the crib. The crib ended up running out the house. Two years later, as Bloodhound was coming out the house, the crib that he got into it with spots him. The crib still had scars on him. Him and two other people began to rush Bloodhound. One of them puts Bloodhound in a headlock while the other one knocks the wind out of him. Then the other one puts a gun to the Bloodhound's chin and squeezes the trigger. The bullet went through his jaw, took the tip of his tongue off, and lodged in his head. Bloodhound didn't get the bullet removed until three months later. As the Crips were walking back to their car, one of them said, Yeah, we got that nigga. With his ears ringing and blood gushing out his nose, Bloodhound got up and rushed toward them, hitting one in the back of the head and kicking another one in the back. On another occasion, Bloodhound got into it with a man who was disrespecting his love. There proceeded to be a physical altercation and Bloodhound beat him up. Guns were drawn. After the shooting stopped, Bloodhound realized he was shot in the nuts. He said luckily it didn't mess up his sex drive. 
A year after that, Latino gang members put a pipe bomb in Bloodhound's car. When he went to go start it, his face caught on fire for about a minute. It took him over a year to recover. During the height of his reign of the Black Demon soldiers, Bloodhound has been arrested for multiple attempted murders, aggravated assault, and assault with a deadly weapon. Although Bloodhound lived according to the rules of the streets, him getting repeatedly shot by bullets began to change his mind. Bloodhound ended up turning away from the violence and brutality that plagued South Central. He became a respected mediator between the Bloods and the Crips. And thanks to Bloodhound's efforts, he was able to stop many teenagers from making the same mistakes he did during his younger years. He started a family and became the father of two children. For years, he did not think about renewing his residence permit. In May of 2010, Bloodhound is detained by U.S. immigration authorities. He was held in custody for three years before being deported in 2013. He unfortunately didn't get to say goodbye to his family. Bloodhound currently lives in Zurich, Switzerland and has only one thing on his mind, to be reunited with his family as soon as possible. The desire appears hopeless. At first, he lived under a bridge. After a few months, he found a job as a dishwasher. He then got a small apartment. Bloodhound firmly believes in his return to the United States. He fights around the clock for it. With his music project Bloodhound and Bloods and his self-made t-shirts, he continues to work toward his goal. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.